Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about uh, Crimson Fists. We're going to paint, we're going to show how I paint the blue armor of Crimson Fists, which is I suppose ironic that the, uh, the, the, the group with Crimson in the title is actually going to be focused on blue. And we're actually going to do both their main colors, so we're going to do the Crimson Armor and we'll do the, or sorry, the blue armor and the Crimson Armor as well. Uh, but here I've got a little Primaris Captain, uh, it's a great fig, and he's all assembled. And uh, we're going to go ahead and make him blue. And I'll show you how I get a nice high shine, but still deep crimson armor. Uh, in this case, I assembled him all the way. I really shouldn't have. <laughs> it would have been smarter to leave his head off. But since I didn't do that, he's getting a little face cover here. So we're just going to ba doop 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 put a little something on his head. And uh, then he's ready to get into it. So turn him into... Uh, Turn him into Mysterio from Spider-Man. What we're going to cover here, and after this part, we're going to jump into just me narrating over all my different steps, uh, is we're just going to cover basically how I tackle the armor itself and uh, and then how we get it in multiple stages, but still being fast and efficient and getting up into a nice, bright, shiny blue, and then how to work with a color like crimson in these small areas to make sure that they pop out and still reads as true while still having the same amount of light reflection. So, with that being said, uh, let's get directly into it. So I'm gonna cut away here and we'll be back and do this faster. All right, so first off, we're gonna start with uh, actually, even though this'll be a largely oil paint job, we're gonna lay down some color. So grab some Vallejo Game Ink Blue, uh, just a nice little transparent blue to shoot over, you know, the bulk of the model here that's gonna end up being blue. Uh, one of the fun things about something like a Space Marine is that they are often, but not always, largely uh, one color on a majority of their surfaces. Sometimes you get a split scheme or whatever, but Crimson Fists are not. When you're working with oil paints, I find that it's often helpful to just establish a sort of base coat of some kind of color. Uh, in this case, like I said, I'm using a nice thin transparent ink out of the airbrush, but certainly you don't have to. Um, you could use anything. Actually, contrast paints make a great first layer for this sort of thing over a zenithal. Uh, you just thin them down a little bit, maybe go 50-50, uh, and there you go. What I'm doing here is just reinforcing it. You notice I started with a very thin glaze, so this, this ink is very, very thin, and I'm building it up. Even though it's naturally transparent, I want to get the sort of mid-tones to shadows deeper blue, still leave some of that light in the upper areas. So... Uh, then we go ahead and give them a quick varnish. This isn't really that much of a big deal. I just wanted to make sure I included it so you can see all the steps that I'm doing. Uh, so my normal varnish mix here is a 50-50 mix between Satin Varnish from Vallejo and AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish to kill all the shine. Once that's dry completely, I took off all the little, you know, masking. And now we're going to do a little mix of the three oil paints you see in front of you, which is some Payne's Gray, a more transparent dark color, some uh, Thalo Blue, which has already been pre-thinned, and some Light Flesh uh, from Obtolung, I have no idea how to say that, 502. Uh, I've been messing around a lot more with those paints and really enjoying them. So as usual with the oil paints, you'll see what I'm doing here is... I'm kind of just placing the lights where I want them to be. Uh, the goal isn't to uh, to actually paint the model. It's a strange thing to say. Uh, the best way I can describe the, the way that I use oil paints on something like a Space Marine is a very rough value sketch. So if you've watched my previous videos on value sketching, you'll understand that like one of the elements of value sketching is that you go in and with pretty, you know, decent layer paint and without much of any concern for blending, you just place all the highlights and the midtones and the shadows in a pretty rough way just to make sure that everything kind of fits. And if you, you know, hold it away from your face and squint your eyes, to where you're, you know, you can't really see it all clearly, the blends will kind of just fade together. And if it still looks right, then it's in the right place. So what I'm doing right now is just placing the highest sort of highlight. So I'm working with a lot of that light flesh, right? And I did it down all one side of the uh, Marine. 
And this is about the distance and space I like to work with. You don't need to place the entire model. Uh, I want to leave and be smoothing out some of this paint when it's still a little bit wet with the white spirits. Uh, and I'm still using a fairly dry brush. So, uh, you know, hence I kind of kept it to just those areas. So now what I'm doing is just placing some thinned uh, phthalo blue in the middle. Again, this is just, be, it's, it's pre-thinned for a reason, uh, because I want it to act as a sort of weaker middle tone. Uh, phthalo blue and your, your strong hues in oil paints, like your cadmium reds and your phthalo blues and that kind of stuff, are all really powerful. And they will tend to have an overwhelming effect on especially lighter colors, right? And so uh, the fact that I, I used a thin one is going to help me to make sure that I don't just erase all of the light color and keep it kind of, uh, you know, where the light still shows through, I guess is what I would say. Uh, now I have a little mix of the phthalo and some light flesh, and I'm just reinforcing secondary highlights, kind of going in, placing, you know, the some transitions between the two. Again, not really worried about blending, just worried about you know, getting down those those rough transitions. Uh, there he was the first time, by the by, that I, I actually cleaned my brush, just so we all kind of understand what happened there. Um, everything else, we had, I had just been wiping the brush off on a paper towel. You don't actually need to go into the white spirits very often with your oil paints. You can, uh, you want to do it if you're going to dramatically change colors, but for the most part, you can, uh, you can stay pretty, just like you relying on a paper towel to wipe things, and that's fine. So now I'm going into a dark mix of the uh, phthalo blue and the Payne's gray. It's great camera work there where I managed to swing right off camera. So A plus work from me as usual. And uh, now what I'm doing is I'm filling in all the dark parts of the value sketch, placing the deepest shadows where I want them. Once that's all been done, then I, I clean the brush off. But now this is a completely dry brush. So this is a, a size six and is uh, just bone dry. Like this has no, this has not touched paint or white spirits. It is bone dry. And you'll notice what I'm doing is as usual with oil paints, it's more of a subtractive blending. You're bringing the colors together, but you're also removing a lot of paint. So every time you see my hand go off camera, what I'm doing there is I've got a paper towel next to me and I'm wiping the excess paint that I'm pulling off onto that paper towel. Uh, this is a big part of blending with oils. As I said, it's, it's subtractive. You end up with a lot more paint on in the initial steps than you actually need to have. So this smoothing step with a dry brush is pulling a lot of the excess paint off and smoothing it all down. And it's really important to go through this step because... Oil paints, especially if you, you know, haven't sort of heavily thinned them with additives or white spirits or something, uh, they're going to be pretty thick. Like most of these are, you know, they're higher grade paints, but ostensibly they're made for canvas work. They're not really made for something this small and that we want to keep this smooth. I mean, if you've ever looked at an artist paint on a canvas, they're not exactly, you know, brush strokes are fine and you can see that kind of stuff and it doesn't matter. Obviously here in the world of uh in the world of miniature painting we 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 don't want that so that smoothing step is really important and that brush that i'm that i'm smoothing everything out with that never touches white spirits until the very end of the session when i can then wipe it down excessively and let it dry because you can wipe a brush that's been in white spirits for a long time and it will still have some white spirits in there they kind of need to just evaporate on their own so now I'm doing the same thing again, taking that dry brush and bringing it all together. And you see that what you can do is really just kind of push along the edges and bring your colors together. It's one of the most magical things about oil paints. Uh, when you apply them, in, in my first application, I was rather thick. And so when I brought everything together, I was really taking a lot of paint off. My second application was a lot more thin i was using you know uh, amounts of paint that i had thinned down more with more white spirits and uh so when i when i go back in on the second time i don't need to smooth over the whole area as much and i can focus much more on just the uh 
focus more on the uh, the areas between where the two colors are meeting. And it's really the power of oil paints that you can just be so light touch with them. You can be so smooth. Like everything ends up so unbelievably smooth. So here I've switched my blending brush. This is a uh, small sable brush. It's actually a very small dry brush made of for, for sable, but made from sable. But nonetheless, I find this to be sort of the finishing brush, as it were. So my initial smoothing brush was largely, or was synthetic. And that's really going to push a lot of paint around. The bristles are very stiff, and it will do a lot of, uh, a lot of heavy lifting. When you get into the more detail work, when you're just trying to get those final colors placed and things really nicely, smoothly blended out, coming in with that little sable brush is a much nicer way because it has a lot more control uh, than the uh, than the bigger synthetic hard brush will have. So it lets me go in there and just really define those edges, pull them out. I can lightly smooth over the the actual paint area itself and smooth it down without having a big effect. And again, you notice I'm still wiping very frequently with, uh, you know, my hand is leaving the frame pretty often to go over there and make sure that I, I do my do my job with my wipey and, uh, and, and get that excess paint taken off that brush because I don't want it getting places I don't want it. Uh, and that's kind of how that goes. And you see how with just a few quick steps and very fast, we get to something, frankly, pretty awesome. So then I just repeated that whole process around the rest of the miniature. Like what you saw me just do on his right side, I repeated on the back and the left and all of that. So now we've got some Indian red and some shadow brown uh, on our palette. And we're going to mix in some blue into that. And I'm going to make my nice deep shadow color. Uh, what I wanted to get at here was something that's uh, much darker. I wanted because I want to pop the shine on this armor way up, and part of being shiny is not just being uh, bright, but also having darks. And in general, uh, I like to avoid black for this kind of a task. It's boring. Black is an empty color. It's the opposite of color. It's the the lack of color, as it were, and you can mix something like that deep brown and a red and the blue and get a much more interesting tone, right? Because it's going to have purples in it. It's going to have those blues of the rest of the armor in it while also having a little bit of, of red to it. And that makes for a much more warm shadow for what I'm to counterbalance these very, uh, these very cold highlights that I'm putting on in this white. So, that's why you saw me mix that in the way I did. Now what I'm doing, since I'm working on smaller areas, I'm working my way all the way around the miniature and just making sure I place those shadows in every location that I want. And, you know, I rotate them a couple times, reinforce some of the shadows if I don't feel like it went on strong enough. This is one of the keys. It's so fast and so stress-free when you're working with oils, like, because I don't have to care about blending. I don't have to worry about applying exactly the right amount of paint or getting it in exactly the right spot. It's just all that melts away, okay? You're not you're not worried about any of that. Instead, you're just getting the colors basically in the general area that you want it, right? And then you're going back in with your other brush and smoothing it all out. So now that I have that deeper shadow applied, you see me again, I'm coming in with that nice soft uh, dry brush, sable brush, and I'm just smoothing out that shadow. So there was a little bit of time that passed in between the uh, first step with all the blues and coming back for this step. Now, you don't need to leave a tremendous amount of time, and it's not like the oil paint's going to dry. When I say some time, I mean like probably an hour or something, you know. And what that's going to do is the white spirits themselves will mostly evaporate in that time. That does not mean the oil paint is dry. The linseed oil in the oil paint takes is what's taking a long time to dry. The white spirits, uh, when they evaporate, uh, they'll leave behind the oil, but it might look dry. It's not. That still takes a day or two. But because that linseed oil is ultimately the medium that's that the the oil paint is suspended in, 
the white spirits is acting as basically a solvent much like water versus acrylic medium in our normal paints uh so now what you see me doing is just going through and smoothing out all those shadows and you can see how instantly it just makes the whole thing so much richer with those deep shadows added and the best part is if i happen to get something in the wrong place if it happens to not be quite correct who cares i can always just touch a little white spirits to it erase whatever it was and reset it it is mistake free painting uh it is so freeing to to work with these oils in this process and this is really fast like look at where i've got this marine to in so that's about 30 minutes of real time like i'm doing this at, this is all at double speed uh, so this is maybe 30 minutes of real-time actual painting. Uh, that's how long I've been talking. I guess there was the other side of it. So uh, probably like 45 minutes, all told. I mean, that is just nothing, <laughs> right? Uh, just absolutely nothing. So now the uh, the oil paint dried. I let it sit there for a good day or two. And... Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm taking a regular acrylic ink and I'm just getting all the non oil paint areas covered. So like the little rubber suit that's in the middle of his carapace, you know, in between the armor plates. I don't know what that thing is called. Black suit maybe or something. I don't know. Um, maybe it's the black carapace. I don't know. doesn't matter. The little rubber thing that sits under the armor plates. Um, doing that i'm also coming in and i'm making sure that all the deep areas have lines in them so uh that like all the elements are properly separated uh, one of the things that's going to happen here when you're working with oils is that you can smooth a lot of stuff around and you can lose some of those deep line shadows so what i want to do is i'm going in and really i have two goals one black out everything that's going to end up being non-metallic metal steel so i can get a so i'm laying down kind of a base coat for that some of that will be done with oil some of that will be done with acrylics but secondly i am also setting some tone so i can actually see how bright this blue is the more zenithal stuff that's around what you're trying to blend the harder it is to actually get a true sense of how deep your shadows are and how bright your highlights are because you have this weird flat interference color that's throwing off your perception of the thing right so by darkening all these elements the in-between joints and getting those all all cover color darker and then going in and making sure that all the things that i'm going to end up uh turning into steel are nice and dark so they're not in my way right and then getting nice solid black lines between everything it lets me then see much more clearly exactly what i'm working with as a comparative to the armor itself okay so that's my basic goal here and uh nice simple easy step you see just like again covering all these little elements that are right pushing up against the armor making sure those have got nice separation lines and moving on so now that he's uh, all dry with that, now we've got a nice, uh, super, super, super duper thin uh, kind of washy oil. Uh, and this does have a little bit of ivory black in it. And now I'm going to do my actual panel panel lining, like the individual armor plate panels with the oil wash. So here I have a nice, sharp, thin uh, synthetic brush. And with that oil paint all worked down and nice and thin uh i'm gonna go ahead and get all of those panel lines so you can see i'm just touching all of these little areas that are recessed on the miniature and like the little vents and the the lines in between each individual panel and you know in between the shoulder pad and what i'm relying on is just the capillary action of the oil paint which will just naturally flow because, again, there's no water in it. It's not a water-based thing. So it flows much more naturally into the recesses. If you've ever made an oil wash, this is just a very simple oil wash. Uh, and the advantage here is that it's so much more controllable. And again, if I get some oil wash where I don't want it or something like that, hey, no problem. I can just wipe it right, 
right away or touch it with a brush with some white spirits or whatever and easy peasy lemon squeezy it's all gone so this step is not the most complicated it takes a little bit of time to work your way around the miniature but using something like an oil is really so much easier than working with an ink or a paint i will tell you that much for sure and again you'll notice i did mix this out of much the same as my shadow color uh mainly being the red the blue and the dark brown i did use a little bit of black since this is the deepest of deepest shadows but that was just mixed in to add a little true you know darkness into what is otherwise a nice color uh there so there you notice like okay that one went a little wide around his one shoulder because i had a little bit too much in my brush no big deal i can clean that up later smooth that out because it's going to stay wet and workable so i can come back in with my normal brush and just smooth out that edge bang bang Whereas if I did that with, you know, ink or something and I kind of fat fingered that edge out, that's going to be real problematic in the in the long run. But the key to this, like I said, is a, a good mix of an oil wash and a nice sharp, sharp brush that'll let you get in there and just do that panel lining and that pin washing without uh, too much effort. So now I'm just making sure I touch all of these little areas that uh, where shadow would naturally accumulate uh, in between the panels, everything like that. And he's good to go. Once again, I just, you know, kind of let that dry uh, as I'm going. I find a couple more places here at the very end. Important to keep turning a mini like this around. This guy is not my favorite uh, because he's got that gun right in front of him. I wish they had the gun down to the other side, but sadly they did not put it like that. So, and there we go. He's all uh, panel lined. So easy peasy. Oh, found something else. <laughs> How many times will I find something more I want to apply? Uh, a few more times at least there you go that's that's my example of like just cleaning it up right went a little wide no big deal ta-da and that was like a dark black color over white and you can see when i wipe it away perfectly fine all the white remains none of the black gets tinted easy so again it's just it's so nice to work with these paints because of what they allow you to do uh, so now there we go he's all all panel lined All right, so I obviously let that dry for a little while. Uh, if you want to varnish here after those are set, you certainly can, but you don't have to. Now we come to the really important trick to working with oils, and that is round two, okay? So the second round of oil paints is very essential you have to let them dry completely and in your initial blending it can be very hard to with just one pass to really pop highlights up high it's not impossible there are ways to do it but for the most part it's going to be challenging because the a lot of the colors are going to want to get in each other's business and some part of it is quite organic. That is to say, you might not end up with quite as much highlight as you want. You might not end up with quite as much shadow as you want. When you blend them together, everything tends to pull toward the middle. Okay. So the key is, if you really want to pop those highlights way out, which maybe you do, maybe you don't. If you looked at the, the Marine after the first pass through and said, nah, that's... That's where I want to go. I'm not looking for ultra shiny marine. I'm looking for, you know, a good level of contrast and and I'm I'm good to go. Great. Then stop there. You don't have to go any farther. There's no absolute necessity to it. Okay? But for me, I wanted to make this guy nice and shiny and it was a good example to show how in general when you're working with oils that the second pass is a, is a critical moment. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking that light flesh color, uh, and again, same reason I'm not working with a with a pure white, right? I'm working with light flesh, which is just a very cold, pale flesh tone, but it actually has a, a little bit of like other color in it, uh, like a little bit of pink in it still. So it's cold, but it's a cold pink, and it just again makes it a more interesting highlight color. So now what I'm doing is with all these other paints dry, right? Because these, these, the other oil paints are dry. They dried completely. And you may have even varnished in between these two steps. 
Now what I'm doing is I'm going in and I just applied the light color and I'm just feathering it out. Just feathering out that one color. And I've got so much time to work with this. I can just apply all my, you know, popped specular volumetric highlights around the thing. And then take that nice bone dry dry brush and just slowly smooth them out over the whole thing how I want it. Right? So I can just keep working my way around, popping up those highlights however I want. It makes it really, really easy to achieve this kind of like very smooth blend. And if you ever have trouble getting things to be exactly like the way the smoothness you want, or you play something in kind of the wrong way, or you want to diminish something like I just did there, you notice I took the brush, dipped it in white spirits, dried a lot of it off, and then went in and kind of just very much muted some of those colors. So now I'm going to go in and reapply, place them a little bit more where I want them, and uh, and then go in, you know, clean the brush obviously before it goes away, get my nice dry brush, and then smooth it all out, right? So it just lets me work in a in a much more sort of natural way where my blending is kind of happening automatically. I don't have to do that much for it. I just put the highlights where I want them at sort of the highest point and then feather them out into the rest of the color. Now I'm doing this a lot with the highlight here in this second pass. You can do this with anything. You can do this with your shadows. You can do this with your, uh, with your midtones if you have too much highlight. You can glaze effectively by just placing a little bit of, you know, blue in this case in the midtone and then feathering it up into the highlight. It'll effectively get the same thing, but it'll be a nice, super smooth transition. So all in all, it's just a really nice trick. And you see how I'm just working that brush around nice and, and regularly, picking all those spots, smoothing out the edges, making sure I hit every part of the marine, you know, testing to make sure I've got everything I want. Every so often you'll see me as I'm going through this process, like stop and rotate them in my hands. And what that's doing is just looking at it under slightly different lighting. In between shooting, by the way, I take him out from under my painting light and move him around in, in normal, quote unquote, normal light. And what that's letting me do is really understand, you know, is there any areas I missed? Is there anything I didn't smooth out? Because I've got some time. I can sit there over the next 30 minutes or an hour and smooth all this stuff out uh, and just keep working it. So it really is uh, an easier way to go as I work my way around the figure here. All right, so there we go. He's looking pretty nice, but he's not quite as shiny as he could be yet. So now I've got a little bit of the a sort of a dark Huldra blue. I'm going to mix it in with some white acrylic ink. Obviously, all the oil paints have dried. Once again, he's been varnished. Uh, again, you can varnish a miniature so many times in the middle of painting it. It's fine. Same same mix every time, by the way, the mix of satin varnish and AK Ultra Matte. And now comes the fun, the most fun step in painting marines, edge highlighting. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of people fear edge highlighting. I actually find it rather relaxing. It's, it's a pretty easy thing. Once you mix inks in, uh, have a little bit of, I have a little bit of flow improver on my palette at all times, so I'm, I'm mixing a little bit of flow improver in with this mix as well. Get yourself a nice sharp brush, and uh, then you're just slowly working it around the miniature. Uh, this isn't an edge highlighting tutorial. I have whole videos on that, but I just kind of want to show you, you know, how I, I work with it. So I use the mix of ink and paint for two reasons. And I always mix ink and paint when I'm edge highlighting. Paint adheres and doesn't run. Ink flows well and is e and uh, gives you a much more pen-like control. A little bit of flow improver in the mix makes it just wick right off your brush uh, very simply. So then... All we have to do is the next key is a really nice, sharp, pointy brush. Doesn't need to be small, but it does need to be sharp. 
so here, for example, I'm using like a 2-0 from uh, a Raphael 8404-2-0 to do this work. And uh, I'm just working my way around the mini on all the edges. Now, I will tend to, I have two different mixes of edge highlights over there on the side on my palette. One of them is sort of a more white blue kind of middle color. And that's what you see me using here on a lot of these lower downward facing areas and the lower part of the mini. I also have one that's a lot more white and that's what I'm using on a lot of the upper facing areas of the mini, the edges that are facing a lot more straight up toward the light. Um, you'll also see me do a second pass on those eventually. Uh, I shouldn't say you'll see it because I didn't, <laughs> that's not going to be in this recording, but I do come back and do a second pass on just the upward facing angles uh, with, you know, that more closer to white edge. The other thing you'll see me doing, when I'm trying to do these really like careful edges. So for example, here on the most dreaded edge highlight of a space Marine, the top side of the shoulder pad trim Woo boy, the inside ring of the shoulder pad trim is a real ball buster to highlight. Uh, again, the key here is make sure that paint's new, make sure it's flowing, little ink, little paint, little flow improver, very sharp brush. And you notice I locked my hands in position there. You see how my one hand is resting in the other? What you can't see off camera is both of my feet are planted firmly on the ground. Uh, I'm sitting in an upright posture. My arms are locked against my desk. My hand is locked together. The only thing that's moving is, you know, my fingertips, essentially, that's moving the brush, right? That way I have a, a much more control over my range of motion. Nothing else can actually move except the part that has the brush. So uh, that's basically it. That's my sort of tricks for edge highlighting. One, don't feel like you've got to nail everything the first time through. You can use, don't feel like you have to hit every single edge on the miniature. If some are really recessed, really hidden, then they might not be catching light in the same way. Uh, you know, there can be, we don't have to have like the heavy metal hit every edge, hit every edge four times with different lines sort of style to every Marine we do. If you want that, there's nothing wrong with it. But I'm saying that doesn't have to be your only option. Um... Make sure you have that paint plus ink plus flow improver mix. You can get flow improver from any any art store, any craft store. Uh, or you can order stuff like War Colors Flow Improver, which is what I use. I really like their brand. But your mileage may vary. Uh, but the um, I just like their mix and find it to be quite effective. Uh, and the uh, always be using the side of your brush whenever you can. When you cannot... Lock yourself into position, feet planted firmly on the ground, and uh, then just patience and time and make your way around the marine, hitting every edge you can. There's nothing too much more than that to it than that. I see a lot of people say they have challenges with edge highlighting. It's usually because they're just using paint. They're not using a sharp enough brush or whatever. As I go off camera right as I try to end this, that is the quality that I bring to you today. This last part's going to be relatively quick. Uh, these are just some final touches. You can see all the edges are there. He's looking pretty, uh, pretty solid. But now we're just going to touch up a few last items here on the armor. Uh, so this is actually a very thinned down Holdra blue, uh, which is a nice sort of slightly deeper shade than the Thalo blue. And what I'm doing is I've worked it down into a very, very, very thin filter. And what I'm doing is just taking some of the areas and saturating them. Uh, where the oil paints hit the highlight, sometimes some of the areas will be a little desaturated, might have a little too much white in them. And so in this case, it's nice to just do your final adjustments with some, with some very careful uh, applications of acrylics. Of course, once again, the, uh, the oil paint has completely dried and, you know, I would have uh, all varnish in between any of these kinds of steps. Uh, Again, I already had before because I was putting on acrylics with the, the edge highlighting. But this is just sort of a final smooth everything out step. It's a nice way uh, to hit those final details. Just these really nice thin filters. Make sure all the lighting is set exactly how I want it. I could certainly have done this with oil paints. 
But at this stage, it's, you know, I don't want to wait another day for some more stuff to dry. So part of this is kind of me being like <laughs> impatient. But at the same time, part of it is also me wanting to make sure that I have a really, really fine level of control. And doing these kind of like very, very, very careful filters in some very small areas, like you'll see me doing it on the, you know, the top edge of the knee plate, right? Um, it's just sub better because with a very, very thinned down acrylic I can wick off, I generally have a little bit more control. So this is just a good way, a good final pass, get some acrylic on there. It's a very thin glazes down to a filter level where you're smoothing everything out and making sure that everything has the appropriate tone and that nice, deep, rich blue we ultimately want. All right, so this is a little bit of a bonus step. Uh, here I've got some Mayhem Red from Scale 75, but I mean, I wouldn't call this a Crimson Fist tutorial if I didn't show you how I actually did the Crimson Fists. That would feel kind of inappropriate. So I'm going to talk over this, and we'll close this video out as we're done here. The armor is all completed except for his nice crimson fists. So I begin by just laying down a nice thin layer. That mayhem red is really transparent, uh, which is, you know makes it great for this purpose. Uh, so I just get a nice layer over that. That's some deck tan, which is a really interesting light gray color, uh, and it'll blend in well as highlights with my existing light flesh because um, it's effectively a light gray fleshish tone. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to hit all of the areas on the gauntlet that I want to be reflecting some kind of light. Uh, there, the Crimson on the Crimson Fist is generally a little bit darker, obviously, because it is you know, crimson. And uh, so, you know, you want to make sure that that red isn't, what do I want to say, over-highlighted. But you do want some highlights in there. I also then took some Holdra Blue, the same dark color I used on the armor for its glazes, and mix that with the red to get my shadow color. Because when you put that deep red and that deep blue together, you get a really nice shadow color for red. Again, avoiding black if we can. So once I have those highlights and those uh, shadows placed, then I come back in with a little glaze of the Mayhem Red again. Tie it all together, and there we've got some nice, we've got a nice crimson fist. You can, of course, repeat this as many times as you want. Uh, I did repeat this a couple more times. You'll see me do a little bit of the work here where I'm fixing things, but even off camera, I went back in and popped up and popped in a little more of the highlights and so on. But that's really all there is to it for the fist. It's such a simple step. Uh, little little base red, little place highlight, little place shadow, glaze over everything. You're good to go. So with that, I'll bring us to a close as I'm finishing out the rest of this uh, and say thank you very much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed um, you're going to see a fair amount of oil paints on the channel. It's something I'm painting a lot with, and I'm going to be you know, true to myself and true to you. Uh, I want to be representative for how I work. If you liked this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. But as always, thank you for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.